This is Susan Wheelbanks with BlendedInsight.com. I am a holistic and integrative healing arts practitioner, an intuitive, and an energy healer. In this podcast, I share tips, tools, and suggestions that have helped me along my path in hopes of inspiring and helping you along yours. Let's get started with today's podcast topic. Hello, bright souls. Thank you so much for joining me again on another podcast. And thank you to everyone who has left me a review on iTunes and also on YouTube. I try to get to all the comments. Sometimes I skip a few, not on purpose, just because they get lost in the shuffle. So if you've made a comment and I have not replied, I apologize. I am doing the best I can. And I want to just dive right into today's podcast topic. This is going to be quick, and I know most of them have been quick lately, but this is something that has been coming up, and so I just wanted to talk about it briefly, and that is healing, healing for yourself and for other people, and why it is a choice, and why some people choose not to heal. And I think it's because of Mother's Day and what's going on with quarantine and all this other stuff that there's been a lot of questions and inquiries regarding other people not wanting to do their own work. And so when you're on this path and you're trying really hard to learn, develop, grow, and evolve, and you have people in your experience that just don't want to move or change or grow, it can be frustrating. Maybe you're that person where you feel like you're doing everything you can, but things are just not moving. There's many, many different, um, I don't know, opinions, variations, avenues for this particular topic. But I wanted to share for years, I've been listening to Carolyn Mace. I love her work on the archetypes. And I had listened to a live lecture of hers a couple of years ago. And I've heard her speak so much that I just understand her work and her viewpoint. But she shares that healing is really getting out of the wound. It's getting out of the shell. So when you actually heal, it's closure. It's the end of a story. You take the power out of the story you completely deflate it and you let it go. So since healing is the end of looking for thing for why things happened as they did, you know, one has to reach the moment where they realize that they have to stop dwelling in that story. They close it and they move on. And so it's an identity shift because a lot of times people get really wrapped up in the identity of the wound and they use that, um, as Brene Brown would say, sometimes we hardwire connection with wounds And with talking about other people or whatever it is, talking about wounds to other people, it's kind of like a hardwire connection because you share a similar struggle. In many ways, it can be inspiring, but I'm sure you've known people who get really stuck in a wound to where it becomes their whole identity and they marinate in that wound and they relive it and they really aren't happy. It's heavy and every decision they make is from a position of that wound And so that's personally why I don't like Alcoholics Anonymous, um, the 12-step program. It always felt heavy to me. I never resonated with it. Um, I remember when I was, I don't know, in my 20s, it was recommended that I go to Alcoholic Anonymous for healing the wound of my mother being an alcoholic. And I remember sitting in there and thinking, this is the most heaviest and depressing place I have ever been. I'm not coming back here. (laughs) It didn't help me at all. Whereas other people are like, oh my gosh, this is so helpful. Even the actual 12 step, um, whatever it is that, you know, except grant me the serenity for things, whatever it is, the whole um, pamphlet. And I studied it in my mindfulness program because we studied Deepak Chopra's addictions, rewrite of those. And forgive me that the name just slips me. Um, but even that just didn't feel good to me at all saying I'm powerless over the addiction. I'm pa-. It goes against what I have learned. And that's probably because in the energy healing world, we can look at the lower energies and clear them away. And so I, I guess I've just found other avenues that work better. For some people, it does work. But for me, it was more about becoming so attached to that identity that there's nowhere to move from it. And, you know, if it resonates with you, I'm so happy. That's why there's billions of different ways for different people. But for me, it never resonated. And so you'll, 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 you'll meet people, you'll know people, and they just stay in that wound. And it's almost like they don't want to move past it because without it, where is their anchor? And that's another thing um, that I love about Carolyn Mace's work. She shares how we have anchors to the past. And you can always tell when someone is carrying the weight of their past because they are very almost slow moving. They don't have spontaneity. Um, They're not ready for much. They don't they're they're so tied to the wound 
that it filters everything that they do, their decisions they make, the relationships they choose, the risks that they take. Whereas someone who has healed that is more spontaneous and ready to get going. They move through things quicker. And I've noticed that in my own life where you see people who just don't want to change. They don't want to move. They don't want to grow. They don't want to learn. They're very stuck. They're stagnant. Their life just kind of, it almost looks as though it pauses because it moves so slow. And, you know, it's a choice. And so another thing um, that I really love and resonated with me through the same archetypal work that Carolyn Mays shares is that to heal, to truly heal, you have to purge yourself in front of a witness. A lot of times when people have shame-based wounds, they'll try to do everything internally with themselves. And it's really difficult because once you actually voice the wound and you acknowledge it, especially if it was from a choice that you made, you learn from it, you grow, you voice it, all of the charge and the shame and the embarrassment, it just seems to dissolve. It's quite amazing, actually. So she talks about developing rituals to move past wounds for yourself. For other people, they have to come to that place on their own. We all came in with something that our soul wanted to incarnate and learn, some kind of contract, something we're doing in this lifetime. And it's up to us how we choose to play that out. And so when you're dealing with people who just don't want to change or move and you feel frustrated by it, there really isn't much you can do other than looking at yourself and saying, okay, this situation is activating this in me. What can I do about it? And then if you can't do anything about it, accept them from where, for where they are. Everybody grows and evolves at different levels. There really is no point in trying to get someone to do something before they're ready because they're not going to do it. And I know I talked a little bit about that last week. Um, but, you know, May and June, Mother's Day, Father's Day, plus the quarantine brings up a lot of frustration for people. And it also brings up our own wounds, our own core wounds that we have with family members and, um, you know, with our own experiences. And so I just wanted to share a little bit about that. And, you know, energy healing is great for this working with a private practitioner. If you have a wound that you're trying to heal and you're ready to heal it and move through it, it's really good to find someone or, you know, counselor, anyone that is not personally attached to that story or that wound. So if you try to share it with someone who is involved in the wound, then it activates their wound or defensiveness. And you don't, you almost find yourself editing your wound because then you're tiptoeing because you don't want to speak it the way that you feel it because you're concerned about the other person. So it's better to find someone that's outside of that has no attachment to it, which is the great thing for finding people that can do spiritual work with you that you know, you're not friends with them. They're just a practitioner that you find someone that you can share things with and they can help you to work through it and clear it. So that's something you can do, you know, find your own way, find someone locally. And again, if it's somebody else in your circle, what can you do? Boundaries, allowing them to be who and what they are and working through your own wound regarding that person is all you can really do. And so what I personally do when I have to be around people who have a lot of anchors to the past, and you can tell because I, I love this visual um, that Carolyn Mace provides. I know I'm just talking a lot about her work, but I feel like it goes so well with this. Um, and in the energy healing world, you know, I'm intuitive, so I can actually see the energy and clear that energy for the person. But here's the thing. The reason I share these podcasts and this information is if I clear that energy and then you re-energize it and pull it back into your circle, then how did we help one another? Because I'm not going to say that the healing was a waste of time, but it's a co-creative endeavor. So I don't like to work with clients who just feel like, oh, let me create this mess and I'm going to put no effort in. And then I'll just call Susan and she'll work really hard to clear it off. And then I'll just return to the behavior with no responsibility, no ownership. That isn't the point. The energy healing is co-creative. It's 10% the healer, 90% the person. So if I get guidance, divine guidance that comes through if we're doing a reading or a counseling or, you know, whatever, then it's up to you to take that information that resonates with you and implement it. If you don't, are you taking ownership? Not really. And so I don't, 
I just don't like to work with people like that. In fact, I won't. I'll just tell them we're not a match because I want to work with people who actually want to move and grow. That's the way I am. When I heal, they hire a healer and they give me suggestions. The ones that resonate with me, I do it and I do do my work. And so um, Carolyn May shares that when someone has a lot of anchors from the past that they don't work on healing their energy goes backwards. So you can always tell those people because they age very quickly. Um, a lot of times their body is breaking down because of all the stress. And they talk a lot about past tense. Usually they have a lot of unresolved, you know, anger, depression, because their energy is focused backwards. It's that's where their anchors are. It's holding them back. Whereas when you meet people who have just as many wound, you know, wounds and tragic experiences, but they've chosen to heal it and move forward. They're vibrant, they're alive, they make decisions quickly, they notice synchronicities, they notice these coincidences that come into their life quickly, they get the signs, they hear the information. And that's me, that's me by choice. And when I'm dealing with people who I know they're heavy, they have a lot of anchors from the past, and they have healing, I just try to shine my light provide compassion. And then when we are no longer going to be in exchange with one another, I cut those cords, send them love, lift them up in meditation, and let them come to these solutions on their own. The other thing I may drop a couple of um, examples, like recently, I was um, talking with someone who has a lot of unhealed relationship trauma. And I just dropped a seed of, hey, maybe you'd like to check out this author or hey, maybe there's a Facebook page that might you might be drawn to. Um, the same person was struggling with nutrition during the quarantine. So I'm like, hey, my nutrition coach has a Facebook page you could join. Um, or, you know, and I just drop those little nuggets. But if they don't express interest or don't ask anything else about it, I just let it go because they have to find it on their own. And I believe that every time we drop little seeds, Eventually, they'll be watered if it's meant to be. I trust that we all each have our own journey, our own guides. You know, we have our own spiritual helpers. And so my job is to notice my own, go where I am led, do the work I'm meant to do, and bless everyone else on this journey because I know it's difficult, but I also know that it's possible to heal and move forward because I've done it. And I know so many other people who have too. But again, it's a choice. So make the choice for yourself and allow others to do the same. So let's just do a quick healing. I just want to do a clearing and then I will flood you with energy and do some shields and grounding on you. So you can go ahead and uncross your arms and legs. Coming into the center of your heart. Okay, and so it is. 
You can wiggle your fingers and toes, come back into your body. I am sending all my love and compassion and hopefully you can extend it to other people. I know sometimes it's difficult, but I remember once I was watching Iyama Van Zandt and she said to someone who was struggling with a relationship to look at that person as someone who was in a straight jacket and in a wheelchair because that's how wounded the person was. And people typically deal with things from the knowledge, capability, and awareness that they have at any given time. And when they are ready to do something about it, they will. And maybe they won't ever do something about it. And maybe that's just something that their soul incarnated to experience. But again, all we can do is focus, hey, am I ready to let go of this? Am I ready to heal this and let go, close it, end of story, no more anchors to the past, no more activation? That's really all we can do. And so I want to thank you for joining me and listening to this. I wish you a beautiful week and know that you've got all my love and support always. And I appreciate you more than you know. Take care. Bye-bye.